<laughs> and that's how you do it with only two darts, baby. Hi, this is Ice Queen from Fort Myers, Florida. You're watching Oni Camo Gaming. Hey everybody, this is your host Acidic, and thanks for tuning in to Oni Camo Gaming for another MGS2 Shinigami run. Let's get this thing going. Alright, so, let's go to Strut F, get the AK to match our uniform that the ninja just gave us. Um, we also have a cell phone that the ninja just gave us, but that's not really gonna be come up for a long time. Actually, it's really one of the least important items. <laughs> Alright. There's a lot to this next part when you're going for tags. I'm keeping track of what to do so we don't have to endure all the calls and cutscenes. I get a little low on comfort ammo, so I'll be improvising through strut F in some spots as to try to procure more. Like I need those. C4 might also be the most useless I item in the game. I can't decide. The AK is actually on the bottom floor, but I'm taking my time getting everything I can with my current security clearance. Just kidding. Knocking the guards down with any force triggers the caution mode. This strategy takes a little patience. Go get some refreshments. Backup unit will be here soon. Just wait this out and everything will be alright. Alright, what else do I need? Going to the core, so I just need to go out the north door. Worth it. And it's lucky for us, we can shelter where the AK is. Pop in this room and swing by the northeast corner and then head out. We're doing it. <laughs> Actually hit. This area will be spawning three ciphers from now on. One trap is enough to get you to the door. You could also dispose of the guard on the helipad. You could go really slow in a cardboard box. Obviously, I opt to remove the immediate problem with ballistics and move forward when the guard is heading down. Alright everybody, we'll be going in the Shell 1 core. Got a minute, Jack? No. Um, we have the AKS-74U and um, the BDU. So. Um, with that being said, I don't like a whole lot of witnesses, so we'll take that out <clears throat> and keep on going. I got spotted a couple times trying to get the tags on this floor. They were silly mistakes you'll see in the blooper reel at the end of the video. I cut together the moments where I successfully collected the dog tags so you can see what sort of strategies I employed before I made an error. Now here's the whole strategy in order. The slower parts have been sped up or cut out for your convenience. There are tons of ways to capture a guard, and the more you experiment, the better you'll get. If you're looking for advice, the book in these south lockers is a real game changer. I'm sparse on ammo again, so I'll be glad to have it. Freeze! 
Metal Gear games up to this point have been mostly line-of-sight, clockwork stealth games. In the next release, the team would implement more nuances to the stealth systems, one such case being camo, and another iteration of disguises, truly blending the lines between soldier and spy, combat, and espionage. MGS2, however, has some of the best stealth and guard AI for its generation, and maybe still to this day. That relationship between those things gives us more player agency than it will credit itself for. Yes, we're manipulating cones and box mazes, and that concept in itself isn't earth-shattering. But the choices at your disposal on how to master that can be sharpened to a point that would surprise even yourself. Try out the VR missions and come back to the main campaign sometime. It will be enlightening. It always kind of irritated me that there wasn't a dedicated aim button to prevent this issue. You technically can let go of the button lightly enough on the PS3 controller that you won't fire. That was level one of the Shell 1 core completed. Let's check out level two of the Shell 1 core now. You also technically can loosen your lug nuts with pliers, but I just wouldn't recommend doing that. And I believe we actually have to go to sh B2 first to get the D mic, so that's what we'll do. But I digress. The PS2 pressure sensitive buttons that this mechanic was designed for feels a bit better with most weapons, but when it comes to assault rifles, I could stand to see some MGS Sigma or Pi or Theta, whatever the hell they would want to call it, but I want some quality of life upgrades. Having the disguise really loosens the reins on what you can do. This is one of the most OP feeling times in the game in my opinion. You can basically just run right to the node. Getting all the tags though, well it's more of the same, but in a tedious way. I have to set my prey up in a bit of a specific spot because the glass around the office will give away my activities. Getting one of them out one at a time greatly reduces that threat. The guy on the perimeter corridor will change up what he's doing and I don't want him bothering me while alluring these guys to my prawn stash. Bashing that locker on the end releases a few books for that inventory. You can drop these all along their walking routes if you want, but I just keep on the old strat in case you want to save most of these for a specific encounter later. This last guy isn't that difficult, but I almost misjudged the timing. I think better of the situation. The item in the top left of the office area is a story one, so grab that whether you're getting the tags or not. Once you handle this last guard, head back to the elevator and go to B1. We have what we need to meet Ames. If you're familiar with the out-of-universe story of the in-universe novel written by Nastasha Romanenko, you probably know a lot about Ames already. Aside from being a defense intelligence operative for the CIA, he was once married to the weapons expert. Unfortunately, it didn't last long. Colonel, then Major, Richard Ames disappeared for a while, but sometime later resurfaced. He needed a pacemaker that would help with his heart troubles. Don't let that garner too much sympathy for him yet. He is a conniving, vicious actor who has faithfully coerced much of the Shadow Moses incident under Patriot orders. It is also said that he led the Fox Die program. We're now going to B1.
Once you wrap up on this floor, you'll have to refresh the room to access the retinal scanner. Biometrics. Crap. It may not technically be necessary to leave the core entirely, but that's just what I do. It's not a bad little walk. Sometime when I'm not recording, I'll experiment with how far I have to go to accomplish this, so we can possibly do it in fewer steps. This room works just a little different than most others. If I remember correctly, and there's a chance that I don't, I apologize in advance if this is the reason I have to make a follow-up video, but I'm pretty sure if you mess with the guards at all in this room, it will basically result in a game over. So I don't hold these guys up. Again, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But I'll leave these guards alone altogether. I'll just have to double check later. Stop looking at me, swan! If you disturb the hostages by hitting or bumping them, that will lure the guards. If you are heard talking to the hostages, that will lure the guards. If you drop your AK, that will lure the guards. If you move, I strike. And if you do not move, I strike. If you come a step nearer, I will strike the boy. You are supposed to use the D-mic to listen for Ames Pacemaker, but I know what his character model looks like and check the usual spawn point. Here comes Snake. Oh, oh here we go again. Is that really solid? If you're playing on a different mode, he may be somewhere else. Try to fly casual and wait before asking the hostage to confirm whether they are Ames. You do that with the action button, triangle or, or Y, depending on your controller. <laughs> this part always got me amped up as a kid. When you slow down and look at the patterns, it's very manageable. The easiest thing to do is put on a box and sit by those boxes over there. I did that on my live stream the other day and it was a nice little break. I took the aggressive method though, so I'm in for a surprise when I get back topside. The elites will be out in full force and interacting with them at all is more trouble than it's worth. If you save those books, those may come in handy here. I ended up in a box anyway. I probably should have just drank the whole room. I'll see you next time.
if you want to support the channel, that'd be mega awesome. Please hit up the Patreon. Any support would be appreciated. I'm trying to do my own thing. I'm trying to put up some videos.